Hi, you guys. I'm here talking about how nice it is to have sperm on ice. You know I talk about this all the time, right? It's always nice to have sperm on ice. Well, I got a guy who's making it happen. He's the chief medical officer of Legacy, and I'm so excited to have him on to talk to us about this today. So Legacy is doing really great things, um, sperm freezing, and at the same time, you can get an analysis and sperm DNA fragmentation testing. You guys all have heard about my tushy method and the S of the tushy is sperm. And then we go to the balls if the sperm is not, uh, not needs a little bit of improvement. And we go through the balls method and the B for balls is background genetics. So how cool is that? One test that can do it all. And then the cool thing about this, uh, this company that, uh, that I've been using more recently is I have patients that come from all over out of state and guys don't have to leave their house. They just freeze from home and then the sperm gets shipped to the IVF lab here and it's like magic. So I'm gonna bring Dr. Rami Gata, 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 he's gonna, <laughs> Gata, I swear. Um, maybe I just need to finish my coffee a little bit and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it. So let me see if I can find him right now. I should be able to find him. Where is he? I hope you guys are all having a great day. We were also talking about um, my uh, April Fool's joke. You guys know I'm all about April Fool's jokes and my April Fool's joke for this year is how sperm is going to, um, we're gonna be able to add a little robot to sperm, a little robot uh, thing to, to be able to uh, guide sperm right into an egg and improve fertilization rates. So Rami's gonna join us to talk to us about that right now. And one of the things that we um, are gonna talk about is how we need to not get bitter, but get better. Because part of the conversation around male infertility, especially when there is a male infertility aspect to it, is uh, sometimes as women, we can get a little bit bitter, especially when our partners aren't being that helpful in improving things that they can improve on their side. So he talks a lot about rebalancing the conversation and workload from women. And so, you know, the, the, the three questions I always ask guys to ask, and of course, we're not, hi, Rami, how are you? How are you? I, I almost ran out of all my jokes. So thanks for joining us. People are getting sick of hearing my stupid sperm jokes. So thanks for joining us. So um, was, for those of you guys who don't know, how, yeah. How to throw sperm freezing parties. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, we have to do it. You know, I do the egg freezing party, you do the sperm freezing party, and then all my egg freezers will meet your sperm freezers and they'll just be matches made in heaven and they can name their babies Rami, Amy. Rami is a boy and Amy is a girl. I think that's the cutest. Yes. I agree, I agree. Yes, 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 yes. We have to do it. So I want people to know a little bit about you. Not a little bit, but a lot. So you're a urologist, long history of working in higher education. You are now in Cleveland, Ohio, but you're here today as Chief Medical Officer of Legacy. And just tell us about Legacy, what you guys offer. And I know a lot of people have already asked, like, how much the test costs. And just kind of talk to us about all the offerings that you guys have. So Legacy, uh, like with all my bias and subjectivity, is a, very, is a great company because it fills the gap with all the need of a male fertility journey, right? So we provide all the services and products for a man or an individual or transgender or a gay couple for them to achieve their own biological kid, right? So the whole journey towards parenthood from semen analysis, storage, DNA fragmentation, which were the only company on the market to do so, and then and we provide support, right? We provide telehealth education, which is for free. And then we have partnership with insurance companies. So people in New York and California, hopefully they can do this for free. So don't worry about the, the financial part of, 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 of things. So other than this, we have great programs for nutrition, emotional support. We now have a great supplement, which has CoQ10 and trust me, CoQ10 is like the best supplement for, for male fertility. However, you need to take it at least 300 milligram, which, which we only do, right? So the, the legacy is the only company that has CoQ10 at 300 milligram dose. So again, we try to cover the whole umbrella of male fertility. We try to be as supportive as possible, as understanding with a, one of the best client experience that anyone can have. Yeah, and I would agree. 
I think my patients have said the same thing. It's been so easy. And what I mentioned before you came on was about um, how I have patients who live out of state and it's hard for both of them to leave work and come here. And, you know, not that we don't need the male partner, we just really need the sperm. And so it makes it so easy for us to free sperm and then move it. And even if you did it years ago, I mean, if I have a guy who's, let's say, 50 years old and he froze his sperm at 40, I would definitely want that 40 year old frozen sperm. So it's really great that you guys offer this and make it so easy. Can you talk to us a little bit about the cost? How much is the semen analysis? How much is the sperm DNA fragmentation test? What is storage like? So we have different uh, packages for different people, right? So with the analysis, it's around $195. And then if you add the DNA fragmentation, it's gonna be a little bit more, but we have different uh, financial planning. So we don't take into account the financial aspect of things, even though we're a company, we're for profit, right? But we know that this is a very stressful journey, a very stressful condition. So we try as much as possible to get rid of all of the stress, right? So we have, uh, 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 we can finance, we can cover through insurance. We have different options for, for cryopreservation or freezing, right? We have, like you can pay monthly, you can pay yearly or five years. And then even after this, if you have any problem, you can talk to our plant experience team and they will figure it out. Like most of my clients are so happy with it. We don't even like mention the financial part because we know we just wanna be there. We just wanna support the clients, right? Let's be very compassionate about this whole infertility journey. Yeah. And then just just to mention about the freezing, right? So so many of my patients, my clients would ask me, who should freeze their sperm? This is a really very interesting question because if you think about it, we have at one extreme of the, of, of the spectrum, people with low semen parameters, like low total motile sperm count, low volume, concentration, motility. These are clients and patients who should freeze because no one can predict the future. There is no guarantee that these numbers will not decline further down, right? right. So this is one bucket of, of clients and patients. But then the more interesting part, like the other bucket is, if you have good numbers, you wanna lock them in, right? So right. you make sure that you have a very cheap insurance policy for the future. So if you have great numbers, why not just freezing them? And with freezing, you can use them anytime. Like there, there, there is no limit on when you should you should use it. So, and we know that with with many study and data that there is no increase in genetic abnormalities. The IVF success rate are are pretty similar between fresh and frozen sample. So basically, if you have good numbers, just freeze, lock them in. If you have bad numbers, freeze and make sure you have something to use in case you need IVF. Exactly, and you know I have um, two boys, and you know we a lot of people think for girls to offer them an egg freeze, let's say as a graduation present from college. I mean, I will definitely be freezing their sperm. Will you guys give me a discount? I'll pay up front for 10 years. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't need a discount, but I, I will definitely be doing that for them as well as for my girls. I think that's really important and something that I think more and more people will be doing as more and more people need the service. You know, like you, we were talking earlier about how what is it, almost 20, 15, 18% of people will have a fertility issue and at least 50% will be male factor. Right. And so as parents- half, Right, we, we are responsible for half of the problem right. in any of it. So we should own this fact. We should be receptive. We should have an open mind. We should not be biased by culture, society, and then by the, the traditional thought of this is a woman's problem, right? It's not a woman's problem, it's a couple's problem. And then, we need to be there for each other, right? I know you 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 counsel your patient on how to, how to deal with each other. Usually, I only see the men in my clinic because they're they're too arrogant to bring their 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 spouse with them, right? So I always tell them that you need to understand that you are part of this. You are part of the problem, and you can be part of the solution because so many male and female factor infertility can be treated, and we have positive outcomes, and and we have a happy ending for all of this, right? So I, I think involving men, having these kind of conversations, of podcasts, just bringing awareness to society, to men, will help breaking the taboos and prejudice about the whole male fertility, will help shift the conversation and the blame from infertility is a problem with women to infertility is a, is a, is a couple issue, right? And we need to think about it in this way. Absolutely. And, and if you want your partner to not be so bitter, 
right? We have to all get better. <laughs> Otherwise it builds resentment for sure. I, I deal with that a lot when the guy is in denial and he's not a part of the solution. So I appreciate you being able to talk about that so openly. And part of what people can get when they do a sperm test with you guys is they get to talk to you or maybe one of the nurses that you guys have on your panel. Is that right? This is a very stressful process, right? Just imagining someone getting a report and seeing low numbers or suboptimum results, right? They're going to be frustrated. They're not going to understand what's happening, no matter what you have on, on this report. So we provide a free uh, 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 and complementary service whereby anyone using the legacy product or services can just schedule a call with me or one of the andrology trained nurses and we can spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour just talking and discussing the results ways to try to improve these results and then i try to give them a continuity of care right right so we're not this is not an official health medical call but then i will guide them on where to go to a urologist who's trained in male fertility and andrology, what kind of tests they expect to have from like a, 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 another semen analysis possibly, hormone testing, ultrasound of the testicles, some genetic testing. So I try to give them the whole idea about the journey that they're gonna go through. This will just help them to manage their expectations, right? So if you know what's next, then you're gonna have some sort of, of relief and you're gonna feel, feel a bit less anxious about the whole process. And then the, the best part for me is when you have the female partner or the, the, the couple together on the call, right? Because mm -hmm. when, when, I, when you see this involvement between the two, it means that they are there for each other and gonna support each other and gonna go to right. this together, right? Right, right, that's awesome. So someone's asking a question, is it possible for sperm to be shipped to another country for IVF? The spouses are in two different countries. Uh, it is possible. It's a bit more complicated just because of all of the laws and, and challenges, but it is possible, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me see. We got a few questions. Do you have a couple minutes just for me to go through some of the questions people ask? Okay, let me see. Uh, let me start here. The first question, um, can you explain sperm antibodies? I just recently heard about this. Yeah, so we know that semen analysis is just a test of the count, the motility, the total motile sperm count, right, and the volume. We know that sperm is also functional, right? It's a functional cell, even though it's the smallest cell in the body and the egg is the biggest cell, right, for, for the iron of thing. We know that we have tests like sperm antibody tests, which is the function of the sperm, right? It's not a very understood test because it's very difficult for us to, to determine if there are actual antibodies against the sperm. So the idea is that in the female genital tract, there are cells that are fighting and killing the sperm. We have ways to overcome this by using IUI, for example, or giving some steroid to try to modulate the, the, the immune response of the female. It should not be a major problem. And this is just a, a diagnosis by exclusion. So once we exclude all other factors of infertility, then we think this might be the cause, but this is a, a, not a, a very frequent occurrence. Yeah, I agree. Next question is, my husband had a Tessie in March due to CBAVDCF. His sample is now frozen and we just started our first IVF cycle. Do I need to be worried about his frozen Tessie sperm fertilizing my eggs? You should not at all because we have enough data, good level of evidence supporting the fact that using fresh or frozen sperm would lead to the same IVF outcomes, right? Even though this was a question for the for longest period of time, now we know outcomes are the same, success rate is almost the same. You can use the uh, frozen sperm for as long as you want. It will not increase any risk of uh, genetic abnormalities, genetic malformation, or miscarriages. So once the, the, the sperm is frozen, the, they thaw it, and then they use the best, most robust, with good morphology and motility. And even though once you inject it in, into the egg, you're just going to deliver the DNA. So you're, you're all good. Are you sure you're not just saying that because you work for a company that freezes sperm? <laughs> <laughs> and then how long can the sperm be frozen for? Indefinitely? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two years? So the long, no, there's no freezer the burn? It was 42 years. Yeah. So yeah. after 42 years, they used a frozen sperm and we got a healthy living baby. So it's, it's just amazing. So once you, you freeze in liquid nitrogen, you just stop time, right? Right. So 
it's up all the, the mechanical molecular genetic process of the cell. And then once you thaw it, then you get it back alive. So it, you can use it indefinitely, basically. Yeah. I mean, I can ask you so many more questions, but I know you have to go. Well, thank you so much, Rami. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be looking at legacy and calling you for that consult to get their, get their guy's sperm sparkling again. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay. Anytime. We'll see you later. Right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.